Now I would like to welcome to the stage Dr. Charles Mercier to present a musical piece. I was very grateful <clears throat> uh, for the invitation to play something to help celebrate this happy occasion. And uh, I was also very grateful that uh, Dr. Baltasar quoted Beethoven. <laughs> uh, you, you will forgive all my wrong notes, <laughs> uh, but I certainly will play with passion. <laughs> I, 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 I thought of the opening of uh, the, those opening words of the importance of being earnest. You know, I don't play the piano accurately. Anyone can play accurately, but I play with marvelous expression. <laughs> I just, I think Oscar Wilde got that from Beethoven. Anyway, uh, I, I, I thought I'd play something from the United States uh, to observe the end of your time here. Uh, I'll play a piece of Scott Joplin from 1914, Magnetic rag, an attractive piece of music. Uh, many of you know I find uh, Scott Joplin an admirable figure uh, for his aspiration, uh, for his striving. He did not write honky-tonk, he said, uh, the popular music of bars and clubs. He was aspiring to pioneer joining African-American music with the traditions of European art music. And he did this as a black man in America. I'm grateful for the freedom we have at this college uh, to consider such things. At the risk of distressing anyone, uh, Joplin's father had been enslaved, and Joplin did not have the educational opportunities at conservatory that his contemporaries in Europe and America had had, like Debussy, Ravel, Charles Ives. He lived and worked through the years of the establishment of legalized segregation in the United States. But through the personal pain of all that, he aspired and strove to transcend and to make his art. This piece is as far as he got, uh, pushing beyond some of the usual structures of ragtime music. It's his last published work uh, from the year 1914, uh, three years before he died uh, at age 48. Right, Magnetic Rag by Scott Joplin. 